It's good though. The wall behind my desk is orange. The wall over there is gray. The wall over there is white. Hey, you're representing the colors. It's good. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. We have Terrence from Netflix on tonight. How are you doing today, Terrence? Doing well, man. Doing well. Excellent. Derek, a super chat already. Terrence, best guest ever. I think so. Reef Automation. Thanks. Oh, for having you're him. so sweet. So sweet. Oh, I didn't mute. Look at that. I failed. I warned you. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So it's like judge... the most horrible commercial ever, too. It's like a fat guy trying to sell flowers. Like, I want to see that right now. <laughs> nice. Flowers and fish tanks. Well, coral's kind of like underwater flowers, you know, halfway there. Okay. <laughs> so, how are you doing? How, how is the world of Neptune? Uh, it's going good. I mean, like I said, uh, you know, people, uh, people here, you, anybody else would have loved to have been a fly on the wall about five minutes ago in my office. Um, are you, so, you going to spill anything on no. what, what this top secret call is about? No, 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 no. We do all sorts of work uh, through Skype and whatnot with different people. And mm -hmm. so I have a big screen on my wall and, um, and we sit in here with a couple of important people to make important decisions about product <laughs> stuff and design cool yep. things you know mm -hmm. so, so that, that's what was going on the, the latest little public one was the little brs collab on the monitoring version of the neptune mm -hmm. so i'm kind of that looks like it went over pretty well so i'm kind of speculating you're probably gonna have another batch of those is that coming well it's uh, it, it's it's definitely one of these things where we knew there was some demand out there and we didn't um we don't we don't exactly know what we wanted what we want to do with it yet. And mm -hmm. rather than us wait, Ryan from BRS kind of um, has a way of doing this sometimes. Uh, he kind of uh, stoked the fire by putting out uh, a uh, poll out on Ask BRS TV mm -hmm. hashtag Ask BRS TV. Yep. I got to get my points in with Ryan. And he uh, asked about monitoring only versus a full controller, et cetera. And after he had done it, he's like, well, Terrence, we should just have something. We should just do something. It'll be a limited run. Then you can see if I'm right or you're right on this point or that point. And that way uh, we don't have to wait for months and months and months to, you know, to, to put something together. We can just start to get feedback right away. Mm -hmm. And of course that just doesn't, uh, I mean, even that I just, I can't just snap my fingers and make something happen. Right. I have to go convince mm -hmm. other people here in the company that it's a decent idea and this is why we should do it and this is what uh, you know might be on the radar later in some form or another. Mm -hmm. So now that we've um, you know we put about I think 150 of them only up on BRS um, and we sold them in less than 24 hours. So yeah. I'd say it's a successful test run. Yeah absolutely um, in terms of selling them yeah I, I, um, I mean maybe call it uh, well call it whatever you want confidence mm -hmm. call it arrogance whatever you want to call it um, uh, I had no um, I, I had no question that they would sell out uh, very very quickly mm -hmm. uh, because anytime we have something new people there's a whole group of people that want to be involved in it and in this case we already knew that the people from the poll mm -hmm. had said this is something I would buy if something like this existed I would buy it so mm -hmm. so that part went through well and uh now i mean the interesting thing is like anything else that gets sold a certain percentage of them just sit on a shelf somewhere i'm sure you've had that happen with things that you've bought you mm -hmm. know oh, i'm gonna buy this i'm gonna use it and then you get it and you're like your life gets busy or something happens you don't do anything with it so as of right now we've got like half of the yeah. ones that were sold or even turned on yet yeah, that's uh, the start. <laughs> you know, yeah. we get to understand mm -hmm. what people are plugging into them and whatnot, because mm -hmm. obviously it's our back end and we've got statistics on what people, you know, have connected to their systems. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to understand that to some degree. And at the same time, Ryan can work with uh, his audience and I can work with our um, all of our control freaks and find out what people want. Right. Is mm -hmm. this what they wanted or did they want something a little bit different? Did they want to be monitoring something different? Uh, they say they didn't need to have controlled outlets, but did they really, in the end, want to have four controlled outlets on it? Well, you know? I'm sure, sure, sure they all will eventually. It's like the gateway drug to Neptune. You're like, oh, you can monitor stuff, but you can't do anything about it. You need that EV-832. <laughs> well, see, that's, that's the guys that are in your camp, right, that think yeah. that way. Um, and Ryan's contention and a lot of the people who responded on the polls, uh, on the poll, said, uh, said that, yeah, I have no no desire ever to want to turn things off and on mm -hmm. 
Um, I think there will be a, a number of people that that will be the case for them. Mm -hmm. They'll be just fine just doing monitoring. How many and how many squawk and want to have some? I don't know. Yeah, we're no, going to find that's true. That's true. I, I'm definitely on the hardcore route, but I'm also on the technical side of things. So I'm all about automation and anything possible. I can kind of fail safe, redundant. I'm 100% for it. Sure. And there, it yeah. is definitely one of those things you don't know what you're missing until you have the first piece, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that There's definitely a huge component of that with, uh, with using any of our gear because we have in the software integrated things so nicely between each other that um, and especially with tasks and things now that make it easier mm -hmm. that you immediately go, hmm, I'd really love to have that and be able to do that. And you just, it just kind of, you know, rolls from there. No, definitely. Tasks, I do give you props on the tasks. That actually has come a long way in making it very user friendly for people to set up, you know, different kind of automation. Here's kind of your templated pre built, click it, next, next, you're done. So well, I can tell you this, you know, um, so if you want, like, oh man, here's some inside information uh, for what it's worth. We will be doing more tasks. And in fact, there will be more things in the Apex that just get easier and easier. Anybody who has bought an Apex in the last couple, three months has run the new app and they've mm -hmm. seen the new install and how it works. And we demoed yesterday on the stream on the three. Uh, and uh, the install is super simple. It's ridiculous how it is now to set up uh, the initial setup on Apex. Like everything else, though. If somebody said, "Hey, uh, you know, Devin, how do you know how long is it going to take me to set up an Apex like you?" Well, that's different than just setting up an Apex out of the box. And so the expectations are sometimes Devin's Apex setup mm -hmm. when they pull it out of the box, right? And so the expectations don't don't match up. So mm -hmm. there's always that. Nope, that's fair. So what, what kind of new tasks was coming, Terrence? <laughs> there's stuff. I mean, we've got uh, you know we're we've we keep. You know, every year we expand engineering a little bit, and mm -hmm. uh, we made uh, a really good uh, acquire just recently uh, on software side. So we nice. definitely be able to amp stuff up in that regard. And uh, you know, we're working on products as always. Nice. We have some really good things. As a matter of fact, I have to kind of be careful. I have to look around me. I'm glad you got the crop on and everything. And there's nothing. <laughs> there are things on my desk and across the room and whatnot. Sure, so, sure. Hide all the goodies. Um, you got to make sure that, because you know, you know, people, it's like, I'll hold up this glass and take a drink. They'll like pause and check the reflection. Re they'll pause it and look in the reflection of the glass and go, wait a second, I saw something there. That's a slightly different gray module. What is it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we're, here's one for you. Here's another inside one. Okay. It's a teeny weeny little itty bitty. Oh, the nano edition. Perfect. The, the nano edition. They said that the Trident was too big. So this is what we're working on, a nano edition Trident that does everything, you know? The only problem is you're going to have to fill it with your syringe every day to top off the reagents. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it is nice. Cute. I keep it on my desk. Huh. That's going to keep. Okay. Um, so speaking of that, how, how is the, the Trident stock? Are they, are they still out of stock everywhere? Or are they Funny still? Funny you should say that. Yeah? Funny you, sh you should say that because today was the day BRS put their next, every week they have another group of Tridents that they put in stock. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think today it lasted 45 minutes. <laughs> and I think they had, I don't know how many, they had 40 or 50 of them mm -hmm. in that time frame. So uh, I'll just tell you, it, it they still are selling super, super well, and the you know the results on it. Look, nothing is perfect like uh, any product. Uh, it's uh, what's the percentage of great to you know to an issue. Mm -hmm. This product it's better than any product that we've ever had in that regard, as far as the nice. customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, people people love this thing. They're rabid about yeah. it. Um, Every, everyone I know that has one seems to love them. So. Yeah, it was one yep. interesting thing. I'm watching different videos um, all the time, like you do, mm -hmm. and I, I I often hear about the idea that well, you don't really need to monitor your calcium or your magnesium that mm -hmm. much, and especially not every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when you have as much access as we do to uh, to reef keepers, mm -hmm. we get all the stories, mm -hmm. right? And the thing is, if you're dosing something with a dosing pump and counting on it to be doing something mm -hmm. for you, you talked about redundancy, knowing that test every day means it's a day or two days or three days or, or you know, if you're a weekly tester, that's, you know, average of three and a half days 
Mm -hmm. that you're going to have to wait until you know that your calcium wasn't pulling out of the vat or it was pulling too much. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, is it most of the time going to be balanced? Not always, by the way, a lot of these additives are not as balanced as people think they are. First mm -hmm. of all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the monitoring Ooh. of the calcium and magnesium. I have a good question. Since you have access to all this analytical data, do most people dose the calcium and elk balanced or is what, is it like more elk than calcium? Like, is there any teeter totter kind of trends to that? I, I can't really understand that because there's not a standardized data point that mm -hmm. is people dose calcium or da uh, dose yep. magnesium or, or whatever. It's not like a, a standardized data point that you select and say, yeah, this one's alkalinity. Yeah, this one is that. So yeah, that's fair. Okay. You can't really know that. I know anecdotally from the, the monitoring and the automated, um, you know, dosing control, try to control dosing. Mm -hmm. um, not that many people actually use the results from calcium to dose calcium. They still mm -hmm. dose it in sync with the alkalinity, which is on trident controlled dosing. Okay. No, that's fair. And I, I do agree with dosing. It is definitely much more relevant to testing magnesium and calcium all the time. I know I don't worry as much with the calcium reactor, but with dosing, we're actually physically adding those elements all the time. You know, you could add too much, you know, your doser could get yeah. clogged, it could bugger up, and that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And I see a question here from Derek, or a response here from Derek, mm -hmm. uh, who's really smart and all this stuff too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he says he agrees, but calcium reactor users don't need really need to have the calcium info daily. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, part, you part, know, part of the deal, part of the package. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's one of these things too is, uh, okay, if you get this and you need this, and then you get this and it kind of comes along for the ride, mm -hmm. and, you know, you, you get your magnesium as well, and you don't have to run those tests. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it's not having to do those things too is a huge benefit. So, I mean, exactly. we're off on tangent here, but... It happens. Um, either way, they're, they're, like magnesium, especially the calcium reactor, you don't need to test it all the time, but you still do need to test it. Usually I find those rocks that you put in the reactors never quite dissolve at the right rate, and then every once in a while you got to tweak it. So it is something that's still good to kind of keep an eye on. For magnesium, sure. for sure, when you're on the calcium reactor, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Because even if you're running, um, what is it, Neomag or whatever, the Julian Sprungs, what, he's going to kill me for this. What is it? What's uh, this? Is that oh, re remake. Oh, remake. Yeah. Sorry, I want to get it right. Sorry, Julian, because um, I use Julian stuff in my reactor. Me too. Remag, if you're using <laughs> yeah. that, there's there's a kind of rule of thumb of how much to put in your reactor compared to the the, the uh, reborn, but mm -hmm. uh, it may or may not be right. And so every once in a while, you have to top off some magnesium mm -hmm. uh, to get it right. I find I had add a bunch more base compared to what it recommended on the bag for it to dose yeah. a decent amount. I, well, see, that's also dependent on the on pH. the pH level that you keep in the in the reactor. So if you keep a much higher pH level in the reactor, that 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 uh, dolomite is what it is, basically mm -hmm. dissolves. Makes sense. Um, what do you keep your pH in your reactor at? Um, well, it depends. The Trident keeps it for me. So it ups and downs your pH yeah. level based on what your elk is at. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, let's see what it looks like right now because okay. i can probably show this on camera even for you guys we'll see so, so the flow is constant and then you adjust your ph that's correct okay nice. but my flow i can adjust it if i want to but for the most part it always stays constant um and then the and then the the, the trident um data is used by uh by a couple of virtual outlets that then mm -hmm. that then are uh right. you know, give their that the, the, their information goes to the CO2 outlet, basically. Okay. So you have a couple of virtual outlets, outlets based on what the elk reading is, and then you right. tell your, your outlet to respond based on which virtual outlet or yeah, virtual switch it, is triggered. Yeah, it has, yeah. A, it has a regular rate, it has a low rate, and then it has an off. Okay. That's basically the three ways it goes. So, yeah, you can see, I don't know how well you can see. Let's see if I can see on here. Okay, nice. So 6.8 right now, you can see it jumped up a little bit. Yeah, and when it goes up, that's when it's off, right? Because it's yep. in rising, and then it goes, does that until the next test from the Trident, mm -hmm. which I test, I don't know, six or eight times, I can't remember a day. Mm -hmm. And so oh, you could actually see the, you know, the, the, the up and down of my, uh, I think my alkalinity, again, this is also kind of like a lazy uh, <laughs> approach, because I probably could fine tune it a lot more, I don't, mm -hmm. uh, because of nighttime and whatnot. I could add a nighttime thing. And mm -hmm. if you look at it now, I think it's probably what well, I don't have the graph on that one, but 
think it's plus or minus probably point three five or something like okay. that. DK. Mm -hmm. Nice. Which is fine. You need a future task for this to make the Kelsey Reactor one? <laughs> yeah, I think it will be. Could be cool. To be honest with you, I think there will be a task for the for the Kelsey mm -hmm. Reactor, and I think there will be um, refinements to the existing dosing task as well. Um, it Part of this is learning how people use stuff, right? And until you get a good group of people all using something and start to work with them and ask them how they're using it and what they do. For instance, I have Joe here um, who we've had his tank on the uh, live stream before, and He's got a hundred and hundred or hundred and twenty gallon tank up front. The corals mm -hmm. in it, you know, all this big still, mm -hmm. right? So it's not using a lot. I think he doses uh, twelve milliliters of whatever he doses, mm -hmm. and because of that, the um, the to try to control dosing is a lot harder to to get dialed in sometimes because it's okay. such a small amount, right? Yeah. So there's some things maybe that we'll tweak on trying to control dosing based on a lot of his input that he has. <laughs> okay, oh, one of the comments. Did you read the yeah. last one? Why should we buy an, act, an Apex? <laughs> it's tax Not season. Convinced. Okay. <laughs> it's tax season. This is true. It's all those tax returns, burning holes in your pocket. You need new roofing toys. That's why. <laughs> no, it's like, look. I, I think. Yeah. I, I think. I think the the biggest reason a lot of people think is what guys like you will mm -hmm. often um, promote, which is. Oh, you can do all these cool things, and then these things are connected to these things, and I, I love automation and all mm -hmm. of this. And really, that is uh, secondary or tertiary to the, the 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 other things. Which number one, absolutely number one is protection, mm -hmm. um, protection, protection, protection. Right? Um, with an apex and uh, on its own, or with a couple of um, add-ons, you can have uh, protection of your floors. You can have protection of uh, how you skim your tank. Okay, mm -hmm. so skimmers, your skimmers running correctly, the skimmer cups not overflowing, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, your equipment itself, you can have the protection of knowing that your uh, return pump is actually running because it's pulling the right amount and it's running correctly because it's pulling the right amount of power yep. and the apex is reporting back on that. So all of these things that are protection um, mm -hmm. are making you have a successful tank for a longer period of time. Um, this is where I have a lot of people say, well, I just want to go old school and I want to do this. And you absolutely can. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if somebody were to run the numbers, your likelihood of having a, um, one, you know, a one year tank old school. Okay. It's pretty good. You got a lot of good information. Your likelihood of having a great two year tank that's been up and running and nothing has caused you problems for two years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you start to get out to three and four years, mm -hmm. You don't have something like the apex protecting your tank you're going to have a catastrophic failure period yep, yep. so every piece of hardware will die eventually right so the difference is having something that can deal with it for you or tell you it failed so that you can do something about it is basically the biggest thing that's going to save you or well, you know make it successful long term there's that and then there's just all the stuff that happens around your aquarium it's not even your fault okay mm -hmm. you know a circuit blows in your house and you didn't know it while you're away on vacation okay yep. i mean uh, somebody steals your air conditioning, okay, which happens all the time, believe it or not. Okay? <laughs> yeah. uh, so your 19-year-old your kid decides to turn the thermostat, uh, you know, all the way up to 84 degrees because they're cold, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and don't realize while you're gone for the weekend on vacation that dad's aquarium is going to cook. I mean, there's all of these things that can possibly happen that will happen to you depending on how much time there is. Eventually. And, and eventually mm -hmm. something like that, something stupid is going to happen and bite you. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's just how long do you want to be able to keep your tank up and having a great... The second thing before you get to all the coolness things is stability because stability creates great tanks. And so the more ways that you can keep the temperature stable or you can monitor the pH and know that that's stable or you can mm -hmm. uh, have dosing that happens all throughout the day and it's super easy to set up, that's going to make your tank stable. If you want to drop the money and you want to have a Trident and have it do the controlled dosing, now you've got lots of stuff that's going to stay completely stable and you can focus on other things. So, sorry, I'm not trying to make this a commercial for the Apex, but you asked the question. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so two questions in the chat. What is the Apex warranty? Lifespan of an Apex. Long time if you don't drop it in the water. Um, warranty. What's the Neptune warranty? So the Neptune warranty is one yep. year. Uh, that said, I will tell you, uh, that is not a, uh, hard and fast rule here. Mm -hmm. Um, you, the, 
first thing I can tell you about that is if you have a problem that you've caused yourself, okay, the best thing you can possibly do when you call into support is tell them, hey, I screwed up. I did this. Can you help me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they hear that so infrequently <laughs> that they will be stunned. Mm -hmm. They'll go, I need to help this guy. And then if you say, well, you know what? This thing is 15 months old and this happened and that happened, then they might mm -hmm. say, like, well, look, this is probably going to be catastrophic. We'll give you a really good break on, you know, buying this the, a new one directly from us. Or mm -hmm. look, that usually could be like a $60 repair. Bring it in here. We'll charge you 30 bucks or something yeah. like that. Um, and, but that's the best thing to do. The worst thing mm -hmm. to do is get something like water damage, try to clean it all up, try to send it in and try mm -hmm. to pretend that nothing happened and that it's in the 13th month of warranty and they open it up and they go, come on, dude. It's full of salt creep yeah, and corrosion everywhere. It's like, uh, we'll know, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the warranty thing. Um, mm -hmm. How long do, does an Apex last? Um, I can tell you there's thousands and thousands and thousands of Apex Classics still running. It came out in 2009, uh, so that's already, for a lot of those, 11 years. Um, and then all you need to do is go out to any of uh, the groups, like the, the Neptune group that we have, and say, hey, anybody out there have an Aqua Controller 1 or an Aqua Controller 2? And there'll be a bunch of people that'll chime in and say, oh, yeah, I'm still running an Aqua Controller 2 or an Aqua Controller 3. So that hardware lasts a long, long, long mm -hmm. time. Again, if you don't get it wet, like you say, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, water is not friendly to electronics. Nothing like to get water. wet. Even stuff that'll tell you that it's waterproof, okay? You know, products in this industry or whatever, it's not. It's not waterproof. Mm -hmm. It's not. It, um, it, 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 water it, resistant. It, Nothing's waterproof. If you see metal on anything, mm -hmm. anything, you see metal on a connector, okay? It, no matter what they say as far as water resistant, water, whatever, I can assure you that they didn't put grade three or whatever titanium on the connectors for that product because it, <laughs> it would cost way too much money. So yeah. it, 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 stuff, it needs to stay dry. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay, Dragon Slayer asks, any chance of a different mounting st style for the modules? I have no more wall space. Um, I don't know if you're going to get anything in terms of like a shelf mount, but I mean, you could probably 3D print something or make yourself some little I vertical paddles. I think that there's an opportunity if people have that problem to do stackable, like uh, 3D printed stackable ones. Mm -hmm. um, and you could stagger them in such a way that you could still see the um, the status lights even on them and get the wires out of them. So you could, you know, kind of stadium seating kind of a thing mm -hmm. with them and save a little bit of space. I doubt this is something we're going to do because... Uh, although we have people have a lot of stuff, it uh, for the average person they have enough space. It's the control freaks that don't. <laughs> I am um, super ghetto mounting, but I had two of the PM1 modules, and I used the industrial velcro and just stuck them together. I there was you. missing one of the velcro things. The little back mount's like done, fixed. So there you, go. you can get creative. <laughs> for sure. You know, okay, I have a random question. When you had your thing up, you had sulfur on your dashboard. Is this yep. um? Secret Terrence probe. You got like a sulfur like, nitrator so going. You'll see what's on my dashboard. <laughs> yeah, this is a secret new product. It's sulfur you add to the tank with a dosing pump. Sulfur yep. denitrator? What are you running? Sulfur denitrator, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a sulfur denitrator and it's actually run, um, uh, it's actually dosed with my dose pump um, mm -hmm. under the house to, to the flow. The, the, the biggest dilemma with running a sulfur denitrator is. As your tanks, uh, nitrate levels are different, or your you know, pollution in the tank, so to speak, changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so needs to change in order to be really efficient, the flow rate through the denitrator. And it's not like it has to happen on the hour, but you know, today, tomorrow, and the next day, and then the fourth day, it might be slightly different. And so because I monitor the negative ORP in my uh, sulfur denitrator, Mm -hmm. If it's if the sulfur denitrator is all of a sudden running, um, uh, you know, super super efficiently, then I go, okay, we need to, you know, we need to speed up the flow on it or slow down the flow on it or whatever it has to be, mm -hmm. and then that changes everything. Okay, no, that makes sense. Okay, I've never used one. I've seen a few of them out there, but it works. Yeah, huh, good to it know. works. It's not for the faint hearted. It's not for the the new hobbyist. It's not mm -hmm. for people that don't really understand, and I'm not trying to you know, come off this way, but if you have to understand what's really happening and understand, too, that you can, especially in smaller tanks, blow your whole tank up if, let's say, it stops running, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you kick it back on, like, three hours or four hours later, 
Well, yeah. you just, like injected like a you know however much sulfur dioxide right into your tank. Okay, so so they're risky, and you gotta know what you're doing, basically. Yes, and if you do, and you manage it right, and you use an ORP, especially using an ORP probe in them, mm -hmm. then it will help out a, a tank a lot. I use that along with my algae, right? My macro mm -hmm. algae. Yep. Because nice. macro algae does really good for all the phosphates, and the denitrator does it for the nitrates, and it works. Mm -hmm. So, are you still dosing and using calcium reactor? Are you doing the whole dual method still? At the exact moment right now, no. Okay. Just That's custom reactor? Like yeah. Yeah. Nope. Fair enough. Curious. Now, here's another question because I'm curious about. Um, you're probably not going to answer this one, but um, so we got the Trident. Does the big three any future ones for doing phosphate nitrate, like mini Triton add-on for nutrients? Look, like anything. Uh, so this, I, I've answered this question a zillion times. Times. Yeah, okay. No, I figured so. <laughs> um, for, the first thing that I'll say is there. Thankfully, because we, we sold, for instance, all of them out today in 45 minutes on BRS, but still then, there are a ton of people who you'll read and say, at $600, it's not a value to get my calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity, okay? So if they're saying that about those three super important things, okay, mm -hmm. that especially with alkalinity that you want to test a lot, mm -hmm. then what do you think? How many more people do you think are going to say that about those other three? It's not to say there's not a market, mm -hmm. but you st you'd still have to sell it for six hundred dollars or whatever it is to make it work. Yep. And the number of people who would buy that compared to the other one would be a fraction. Yeah, and fair. This okay. is what I do, right? Yeah. This is, I, I, the understanding of the market and how many and what it would take. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, in that respect, it's not to say that. Uh, we haven't looked at it or we're not looking at it. I can't mm -hmm. comment one way or another on that. But there is a there is a market demand problem around this. Everybody wants everything, okay, until they're told what it's going to cost them when they get it, and then it is available. And once it's available, now they mm -hmm. have no reason to uh, this, that. Then it becomes, well, if it had this, then I would buy it. Well, if it had that, then I would buy it. It, it, this is the, the nature of uh, of consumers. Dang consumers. Yeah, and it's okay, <laughs> but that's why you have to have somebody mm -hmm. able to really look at it and go, what's the reality here? That's part of the Apex uh, BR Special Edition, right? Yeah. Well, it's what's bang for your buck, right? I mean, it's a lot of time, effort, and energy, and resources to make this happen, right? So you got to make sure there's enough people well, that they're perfect, wanting to buy it to justify it. Was the BRS Special Edition where yeah. beforehand everybody's like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't need an energy bar. Oh, yeah, I would just want to do monitoring. Oh, yeah. And then after it came out, right, mm -hmm. during the day it was even still some of them available, Ryan had another thread, and it was like, yeah, but it's really not worth anything unless it has a, you know, an energy bar on it. It's like, well, because now you've made it available. Yeah. Right. And now it's like, well, yeah, what I said before, ignore me on that. Because now I can, you know, so it, that's why you have to, you, you have to really be careful on a lot of these kinds of things and pick mm -hmm. your, pick your products because there's not an infinite resource. There's, you know, there's no shortage of ideas. Yeah. Oh, ever. exactly. Okay. There's only mm -hmm. a shortage of ways to make them come to fruition and get paid back on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's fair. But. <laughs> so, so are you? Uh, so I'll give you another one on another company, right? Okay, yeah. it's a perfect example of this, right? We'll fire mm -hmm. it back the other way. So you're familiar with the frozen food uh, dispenser? Uh, yes, yes. That that was on Kickstarter, right? Did it make yep. its goal? Um, I don't know, but I think I saw them or a different version at Macna. They had a little demo of one. That was the one. Okay, same one. Yeah. Okay. That's the same one. So yeah, I mean, here's a product, right? That it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to have a frozen you know, a frozen food fe automatic feeder, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody would, okay? But here, talk to your audience and say, do you want a frozen food uh, uh, dispenser that dispenses seven cubes maximum before you have to reload it, mm -hmm. okay? And it costs you $350. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I think in the end of the day, most people are going to, are they going to sell some? Absolutely. There's plenty of people who will buy two or three. Mm -hmm. now, but does it make it a successful product? No, oh, that's fair. I mean, and at that price point, it's harder to, right? A lot of it comes down to the price point. If it's 150 bucks, I'd be like, oh, sweet, when I go on vacation. How could you do um, something like that for 150 bucks? That's the uh, the unrealistic I expectation, know. right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, consumers, how they think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, Well, this is market. That's the problem, right? The, yep. the, the, 
we we are so used to every other piece of consumer gear that we get, right? Which has scales of, of volume that um, you know they're one, two, four magnitudes. Some of them of what they are in mm -hmm. the reef keeping hobby. Oh, huge! Like this is a very small niche hobby relative to like the standard issue products. So, yeah, or even other hobbies like golf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Fair. True. Golf is huge. That's true. I mean, there... you, you, you can you could you put something on Kickstarter that automatically put your tee in the ground, okay, and sell it to one percent of the golf people out there, and you would probably still be doing good. Yeah, that's true. You'd be set. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, as turn okay, so the automation one, those will look pretty quick, or not? Sorry, automation, the monitor only version. Yeah. Um, Paul's in the stream. I know he bought one. He's out in the UK. He's all like, "I'm the only one in the UK." Yay! So <laughs> it was making me laugh earlier, but yeah. uh. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so you can still plug in any accessory you want to those and turn into full Apex if you wanted, right? Yes. So basically, every accessory available plugs into that. There are no limitations. Uh, you could get an Energy Bar Four, and mm -hmm. you could have realistically, I don't know, they're 120 bucks. So you mm -hmm. know, you're 370 bucks, and you've got um, you know, pretty sweet setup. Way better than you would have had with a uh, an Apex Junior. Yeah. In that sense, because mm -hmm. you got pH monitoring, you got a float switch thing, and you got Wi-Fi. Yep. Um, and even though that that's 120 more than the Apex Junior, right? You, got, you can do more. You can do a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very true. So another fun thing, I know I was kind of half talking about this the other day. So I ordered an ADK the other day, which I'm going to hack apart from my auto water change station just for alerts and everything. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is a little good one. Float switch versus optical sensors for level sensors. Mm -hmm. I know we're partially talking about having, yeah. you know, it might be better to have optical in the Positive top. Positive negatives for both. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so down below, uh, float switch down below, optical up high. Is mm -hmm. that mainly just for the ability to clean it, maintain it? The optical sensor is a is a really good reason. I mean, there's lots, there's other ways too to do things that aren't even in the you know the Neptune um, toolbox. Let's say that you could um, that you could use. There are things like temperature. You could you could put a temperature probe. Um, you know that you could adapt and put on the side of the thing. There's lots of different things yeah. that you can do. Um, the, the float switch way is tried and true. Mm -hmm. it, it works if you get good ones, the ones from BRS, um, that we actually use the same exact, exact same ones from the exact same manufacturer. The ones I can't remember, is it the Chicago ones or I can't remember which ones they are. Um, but they sell them at the BRS. Those are tried and true. They work, they work a long, long time. They're sealed, mm -hmm. everything. The only dilemma with doing that in the bottom of the tank, um, is you have to, you don't have to, but I would not have the wires even in the water with that kind. I would use like the right angle kind or something like that where I actually drill the tank. Mm -hmm. which is funny because it's like, oh, drill the tank and then it's going to leak. Mm, no, but then you don't have to run the wires up inside the wall and all of that nonsense. No, that's fair. Then you have to worry about the connections in there. But actually, yep. one thing with a lot of float switches, they always have short wires. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Like, you know, especially if you have it in the bottom of a bin or somewhere else. So. Yeah, it's really strange. But I, I think a lot of them are designed to be mounted outside and not have those. And then they, in the beginning, they really did that. When remember, when they never worked, right? Mm -hmm. it, they were never sealed correctly. And then a few different manufacturers started realizing, well, people are really going to submerge this entire thing, so we better seal them up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if I was in your situation, I'd probably drill. I'd probably stick a right angle, um, you know, float switch in there. I might take two of them, put two of them in and put them in, um, in series. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'd, I'd know for sure that it, it's working, um, always. And then, you know, uh, then up top, I would use an optical sensor. Okay. Nice and easy. Yep. Uh, so the one I, I did buy four optical sensors, but I still might do the float switches just to be safe. Um, it's cause yeah, the extra ports might as well use them for something. Sure. Um, now, for floats or opticals, anything, being in an RO container, would you even worry about it getting dirty? Only thing in there is ever RO? No. Okay. How about saltwater mixing container? Yes. Questionable. Depending, depending on your yep. salt, and, and uh, a lot of depends, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, would, I would certainly be concerned about that. Okay. Uh, Matt Giles, thank you for the super chat. Uh, the thing about development for Dude, you're rich, man. Look at you, man. Super chat, super chat, super chat, super, super. chat. <laughs> uh, think about development for expensive things in this industry. You need to find a larger industry that it also works for. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you can build a product once, sell to multiple industries, you're in a good place. Yeah, 
true. Yeah, that's 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 certainly great. And it, 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 in theory, it sounds great. If I give you a perfect example of that, just an aside, it's like everybody's like, well, wow, the marijuana industry is going great. Your stuff would be awesome for using in that field. And it, it is kind of, right? But mm -hmm. it's not just building the thing. Now you have to actually fine tune it, tailor it, market it, sell mm -hmm. it everything into that space and so it's not just a amount of build it and they will come it, it's a little bit a little bit more than that but it's a good point i mean we yep. sell we sell leak detection sensors to companies who make uh portable dialysis machines oh really yeah hmm. what well, we sell people who make wash down stations for hvac in large mm -hmm. high rises i mean just there's lots of verticals that use our stuff nice no, that's cool that's a good way for you to branch out to other little things uh um, what do you think man what, what am I doing? Yeah, what's all the automation stuff that you're doing? Are you putting an Apex on there? It's already on there. It uh, is? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, there's actually, it's like future-proofed. I haven't even figured out what all I'm doing yet. The only thing it's really doing so far, aside from like the backup heater controller and, and then the calcium reactor for just turning the solenoid on and, and all that jazz. But I have one thing that annoyed me with my last tank is because I made it all pretty and had the wire channels and stuff in there and all the wires were hidden, but it's a pain if you got to change something, right? You got to pop off the thing and fish out your 800 yeah. wires. So this time I have an, a power bar at each end of the stand. Mm -hmm. So whatever size close equipment, I can plug it in. And I have another nice. one down below where the laundry is, where my auto water change is going to be. I have another power bar mounted on the wall. I have three power bars so far that are all rigged up and there's not much hooked up yet. That's coming, so tanks in its early its infancy still but lots of good stuff it's kind of a you know it it seems like a hassle to have to run a wire to to do those but you've got to admit that it there is a there is a really good sense of uh security knowing something is connected with a wire right mm -hmm. no there is um so yeah through the floor i think i ran four odi lines i ran a usb aquabus cable and i ran a cat5 just for i don't know why I mean, switches or who knows what i don't even know why i ran it i mean if you i mean because we get this question a lot why don't why don't you make you know the energy bar wireless right mm -hmm. you get that question all the time how comfortable would you be with that well it'd be nice to have the option but if i can wire i always will run away because right. it's more reliable generally, right right um i mean Just general about it I, I i don't think this is i don't think this is up for debate i don't think anybody on this on this channel right now in this discussion would ever say yeah there are cases where wireless is you know in in with your aquarium is going to be more uh reliable than a wire yeah i mean wireless rf bluetooth the technology is better and it is pretty good these days but given if i have both options and there's a wire there and it's easy to run why not run it right if it's the opposite end of my house and i could have them wirelessly talk to each other that would be sweet but if it's easy to run a wire, then I would do it. Right. But we're talking about aquariums here, right? And so, yeah, I mean, if you have wireless, something like that clear across the room and it's controlling part of your your life support system, mm -hmm. and especially if it doesn't have maybe a, a great fallback. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the disaster in that when all of a sudden there's some, you know, somebody turns on something out on the street and... The signal gets scrambled and you lose connection on everything. So we're not going to have an EV32 wireless? Dang. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. It's okay. I already ran my USB cable. At least not, it, it, <laughs> it, at least not in the very near future. And uh, I don't, I haven't seen any, uh, any methodology that uh, would make it meet the need. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, um, you know, the idea that, uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting because there is this um, this thought of why not have everything you know I saw the Mobius stuff too why not have everything mm -hmm. be part of the control right mm -hmm. um, and the first thing that came to mind for me is would I rather have in a chess game three pawns or one queen that's that's immediately what came to mind <sighs> there's two different views here so one if there's a single point of failure then I would agree but everything's work as a mesh network and there's no single points of failure, then there's a lot more redundancy built in. Depends how you look at it. Yeah, you can yeah. maybe assume that if uh, if every one of those things are equal and if you don't have conflicting problems. Um, I think um, I think it is, uh, a, I think I've, I heard it's called a Byzantine general's problem. 
you, you might want to look that up or somebody else can look that up. But it's basically when everything is in control, nothing's in control. Nobody knows who's in charge. Interesting, interesting. Basically. Um, but, but the wireless thing in general, is it's been around for us a long time. And I think certain things you can do wireless and you're kind of okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I can put a lighting program in my light and run it wireless. And yeah, okay. Not that big of a deal, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, what are we hearing from the people? Um, Richard really wants you to say hi. Uh <laughs> Quiero Reef. I love that. Look at that. That's, that's from podcast, but it's funny. Yeah. Lots of people are talking about Skimmy Podcast. Really? Oh, funny. There you go. They're, they're asking where it's at. Yeah, I've got one. We got to get a couple of them together. It's Richard's fault. Yeah. Richard's not, Richard's not here right now, so I can say it's Richard's fault. It's Richard's fault that he lives up in the hinterlands, I call it, which is way up in... Uh, in uh near oakland so and uh, alameda uh island and so uh it, it's it's hard for us to get together so when we do we try to put together a couple episodes and then we push them out every other week yeah i, I wish we could make more uh, yeah, that's good though that's fun uh, a couple asking about a wireless display you don't need that you can use an ipad a tablet Kindle, whatever that little Amazon was. There's, there's a bazillion different devices for that. Interesting. Here's a question. Here's a question. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Young says, Terrence, uh, ever thought of using PoE um, on your next Apex version for single data and power delivery hookups? Interestingly enough, we do have one link, which is more or less like PO PoE is power over internet, right? Or mm -hmm. ether sorry, ethernet. Sorry, power over yeah. ethernet, which is what is used a lot in the cameras that you, so you can run one wire to your, um, uh, to your security cam. And then basically don't have to run, you know, a power cord to it. Yep. Uh, so we essentially do that with one link. So there is only one wire going to something, um, which is interesting too, because that also means that there isn't really any advantage to when you talk about, um, uh, you know, even a wireless device, because you still have to put a power cord in the darn thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like even if we had the Trident and the Trident was wireless, you'd still have to plug it into the wall. So it's yep. like if you got a one link, you still got mm -hmm. one, one wire. Okay. So. Just because it's sitting here. You were talking about wireless displays. So I got this super cool like iPad stand that I use nice. for my, I use this for kind of like my tank controller monitor. Yeah, it's like the one at the uh, restaurants, right? For scanning yeah. And stuff, yeah. But, and the whole thing's magnetic, so it pops. Oh, very cool. Pops off. Now I got a little brick like this that's PoE that I'm going to mount to the wall. And then I can go bloop and just pop it on the wall and use it as my tank monitor. It's always backwards that on the camera. That's really cool. Yeah. So it, it, Wait a sec, but it's PoE through the magnet? Yep. How can that work? Well, it it charges it through the magnet. So it's a magnetic base. There's little contacts. Okay, that I get. backwards. Okay, yeah. that I understand. But you said it's PoE by going like that. So it's not really because you have... Yeah, you still have to... There's not, a mount, one of these pucks will be mounted on the wall with a okay. PoE wire through the wall, basically just to charge the iPad. Just but, for the charging. It's not yeah. for the Ethernet part. Okay. Yeah. So you have a little thing floating on your wall, and let's go bloop, pop it on the wall, and there you got your always-on display to monitor your tank. It's good option for you, Derek. Actually, I know you sell. Looks like Reefs.com asked me if I'm coming to Global. No, I won't be at Global Pet Expo. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Android update with orange background and white lettering. Too difficult to read. Will there be an update for that or a way to change that? I uh, don't know. I don't use Android, but um, it's. Uh, I think it follows whatever the scheme is for dark mode. I think on Android. Yeah, it's the dark mode that messes with the colors. Because I do the same thing on my iOS when it messes, changes a little bit, but it works. Does the job. Looks good. Doesn't blind you. Okay. It's always, it's always Other... the Android people complaining. <laughs> Android people are like that. They are. <laughs> trouble so much because I always talk that way. It's like, it's those Android guys, and they always get so mad at me, you know? Yeah. I, well, because I, I have, like, obviously iPhone, iPad and stuff, and I have a bunch of buddies that are all like, oh, Apple, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, why isn't this working? I'm like, I don't know, it works on my phone. <laughs> right, exactly. I love the, didn't you get my text? And I'm like, no. And they're like, yeah, I sent you a text. I'm like, oh, maybe it's over on my phone because all my ones from everybody who has an iPhone come right here on my <laughs> On your computer? On my computer, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I know I feel you. <laughs> uh, Frank, we did talk about the whole phosphate and nitrate thing earlier. Rewatch that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we already kind of talked about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, for a display, honestly, if you have like an old iPad or anything, perfect. Yeah, I, I will give the, the here's the, 
uh, I guess it's a slam to Android guys. Again, we we have um, obviously a lot of displays when we do the trade show booths. And mm -hmm. uh, and um, in the past, I recommended the uh, Amazon Fire yep. tablet. Uh, subsequent to that, well, I guess this isn't a slight to the Android guys. It's a slight to another group. Um, the subsequent to that, I did a video on how to use the um, New Vision uh, nine or 10 inch screen. That's mm -hmm. a Windows 10 tablet, right? You can get it for like 70 or 80 bucks. And we use yeah. those at the, at the show mm -hmm. and they worked, but they lag, they're laggy. They'd run out of memory An update would come along and you'd have to delete five things to get the update to go on. So eventually we just like, yeah, we're gonna have to run iPads. <laughs> it's just the way it's going to have to be because they work. Yeah, no, that's fair. It's true, and they do work. And the fire ones, though, it's hard to beat for like seventy bucks. It's cheap for a display. But right. I, I think a lot of people now that iPads have been off. You have a generation one or two, a really old one sitting around collecting dust. Perfect. Oh, absolutely, it's perfect. Yep. So it's perfect it's, for that. I feel like it's, and you can buy them so cheap too, like the old ones, because they're just throwaway now. A lot of people upgrade; they're just sitting in a drawer somewhere, and they pick them up super cheap. So here's a good question, okay? Chili Wills yep. Reef said, I tried using my older iPad to run Apex Fusion. It said the iPad is not compatible. Is there anything I can get do to get it to work? So here's the deal. We do have to stop developing, uh, you know, the apps, <laughs> certain versions, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but the beauty is uh, with the Apex is Apex Fusion is a web app. So mm -hmm. you can still go into Safari Run Safari, go to apexfusion.com, put it in full screen mode, lock mm -hmm. it down if you want, and um, and it'll work just fine. Yep, exactly. Just and the app. You, you can even save the link on your you know desktop, yeah, whatever you call it, home. as a yeah. quick launch. So it's just like an app. So basically the same thing. So really easy way to do it. Uh, and hey, Dad, meaning Devin, I guess, and Terrence, I would love to use a 42-inch uh, for an Apex monitor as a way to do so. Absolutely. Stores yes, do it all the time. Um, it, it, it's uh, it's fun to do if you want to have it on a wall somewhere. The thing I can recommend is get a cheap computer, hook it up to the, the HDMI. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, some TVs have it built in now, like my LG. I can pull it right up on my LG screen here in my office um, because it has web access in it. Mm -hmm. um, if you do use a computer, the trick is zoom it up in the browser so it fills the screen because you'll have a lot of resolution to fill. So there you go. You could probably use, like, if you're a bit techy, you could probably use, like, a little Raspberry Pi as a cheap computer, too, if you have one something cheap and then just use the web browser in there. Yeah. For um, sure. Or old laptops, same thing. Got an old one kicking around collecting dust, super thin, slide it behind the TV. You'll never know it's there. What I tell the stores to do, you just get somebody, so one of your old notebook computers, put it up in the hung ceiling up there. Mount mm -hmm. the TV up there, run the HDMI cable, and you're good to go. Yep. Get a wireless. I think Frank's Tanks. Shout out to Frank's Tanks in Dallas, Texas. I think that's what he does on his, and he's got a wireless mouse and keyboard for it. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Jason, switched off dark mode. Works fine now. No need to update for me. There you go. All fixed, <laughs> Jason. Um, I think Derek or someone else was asking that it will display for the purposes of an alarm or something or there. Now, use one of your outlets to turn on, flash a light for you, turn on, you know, you could have a little siren or something that will go off for you in the middle of the night or something if you want to be alerted. Uh, one thing that I did before, which I got in my new tank, but I had a big strip of like red LEDs either behind the tank or this I'm going to put on my light yeah. bar. So the roof will glow red if there's an alarm on. So it'll be obvious when you walk by. Like, whoosh, okay, something's Very up in the tank. Go check and it in out. Fact, in fact, um, Devin, if you weren't at our meetup at MACNA, or our Magna meetup, uh, we actually had Jeff Stevenson um, who gave a uh, short presentation. We did these five minute prezos. Mm -hmm. He takes, he has some Raspberry Pi thing or whatever that then connects to some uh, controlled lighting that with his uh, Apex and the zero to 10 ports is able to have different colors come on the wall depending on what is happening mm. wrong. That's cool. There you go, Devin. There's something nice. Pretty uh, he has a thread on it somewhere on how to do it, probably out on the on, on the Neptune uh, thing. There is a good question here. This is probably the best okay. question of the stream so far, okay? Mm -hmm. Which says, any communication between Neptune systems and Ecotech so that future compatibility will be possible, or will Neptune make products to compete with Ecotech like LEDs? 
So I can't talk about any kind of future products, and that's just the way it goes. But as far as communication goes, we're always open to communication here. We see the guys at trade shows and everything all the time. Um, uh, there is, a, you know, a wind out there, I guess, that there's another light coming. It's usually about that time of year. Um, we don't know anything about it, and we don't know anything about whether or not the chips in the Mobius thing going forward are going to work with WXMs. What I will say is I would be very cautious and figure it out first before you rush out and get any new Ecotech product if you're using a WXM because we don't have any knowledge of any of those products yet and they may or may not work. So uh, no. you, can, you can ask them about it. No, no idea on future products, obviously, but current products, I know you can have a firmware that works with WXM in the reflink, or there's one that's a Mobius framework that works through more of the Bluetooth protocols. So I know there is, depending on which one, just because I've been beta testing stuff, so it depends on which firmware is on the device. On existing um, products. Yeah, who, I, I don't know what new ones, because they're not right. out yet. But. And I, and I and to be honest, I don't know mm. if you can run both or not. I don't know if that's the case uh, mm -hmm. either. I We have not been you know part of that whole um, thing that they're doing. Um, Wait, surprise, I mean. But WXM, there's no BXM module, Bluetooth X? <laughs> yeah, no, but we get yeah. a certain one, a certain mm -hmm. module that goes in, because we buy the modules from them yeah. that go into the WXM. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, it hasn't changed as far as I, I've been told or I know. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and I don't know that it'll work with the next generation of lights that they, that they put out or next generation of pumps or any other devices. That's mm -hmm. definitely a question that you should ask of them and, you know, use that in your decision making process on any future products that they have. What, um, just out of curiosity, what color is the module inside of it? Is it green or black? Um, I think ours is green. Okay. Why? What's the difference between the two? Uh, the black is the newer one that has Bluetooth and other stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure ours is the green one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So current so, one, WXM. So that is definitely something to ask them about. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, see if they've got an answer for it. We've not been told anything. It, it, it's possible that we could make it work with it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if they give us the keys, right. Um, it doesn't always happen. They didn't want the vector to be controlled, so it's not controlled, but, uh, is what uh, it is. It's a good question. It is. I had actually a really good question and I completely forgot it after all that. Couldn't have been <laughs> as good as his. Might've been. Uh, we're, we're never going to know now. Oh, I have another question though. Um, with Neptune, there I there see, is. I, I did see the video though. Of the Ecotech guys with the Mobius say to go burn your reef links. <laughs> yes, I know that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, was that like, was good. Whoa, okay. You no longer need this. Burn it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. On the side note, I have been using Mobius and beta testing it with a bunch of my gear, and it does work very well. So I do like it. Good. So, but the biggest thing is WXM uses RF and the new one. But I know the chips can do both, so who knows what's happening in the future. Right. Now, with Neptune, because you're talking about how you had a Raspberry Pi to control different color lights based on an output of the 0 to 10. Sure. Now, is there, I feel like there was a web page you can get where you can get the status of different outlets from like an exporter or an XML file or something. Is that still a thing? Yeah, I don't think there's anything specific like that that's that's official, no. Okay. I mean, there might be a hack or something like that, but... It's been a while since I've played with this. Okay, um, what I was thinking is if there was a way to get the status of an outlet through like a web link or URL or some, some way to pull it, then you could use if then then that to control like a smart home light to change colors based on the status oh, of your agree. Apex. Well, yeah. you know, the one thing I will warn you that there, I mean, there are terms and conditions and stuff that we have. And so mm -hmm. generally going out and scraping data out of, uh, <laughs> out of web enabled products is usually, and for sure in this case, not allowed. What? Um, a lot of reasons. For <laughs> All right. So there's no like slash status or slash something to just to get like, I'm trying to think how you could just, and, Get stuff to talk to each other based on the status of an outlet. Sure. No, I understand. All right, all right, all right. All right, so no easy solution. Okay. Check. <laughs> but, hey, mm -hmm. that's what the uh, forum.neptunesystems.com is all about. Go out yep. and post a uh, question out there, and I'm sure there will be people, including Russ, who will set you straight on what you can do or can't do. That's fair. I think I, What I'm recalling is something from back in the classic days when it was on the local network. 
so it's really fuzzy in, in a long right. time since so I've looked at any of this. So. Right, right. Well, that's still available. I mean, everything basically the local is is identical to Fusion. Mm -hmm. No, fair enough. Let's um... see any questions out there. No, oh, I got from Neptune stuff. What else you got? Any other exciting stuff coming out? Somebody said meh, abyss pumps. Or me, abyss pumps. Abyss. Oh, up. Okay, it was meh first. And I was like, what? They're great. <laughs> um, no, my, my stuff on as far as general reef keeping stuff with me is um, I do not do anything on my tank probably for like eight days at a time. Yeah, I mean, once you scrape the glass. You only and, clean the glass once a week? Does it stay clean or you just ignore it for a week at a time? Well, my, well, my glass, I clean probably every two or three days. Okay. okay? Um, but anything else, I don't even go down into the fish room, but maybe every seven or eight days. Uh, okay. Uh, because everything's kind of on autopilot and mm -hmm. the tank's growing like crazy. Um, I harvest, you know, three buckets worth of coral and take it to the to our local Neptune Aquatics here in San Jose. So it's uh, going really well. I got lots of fish in there now. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Nice. Now, is your fish room under your house, right? Like yes. your house is raised up and it's on a hill. Yes. If you so... go to tinyurl.com slash Fugazi425, you'll see the thread and you can see how I dug into the side of the mountain. Nice. Now, did you do that prior for the fish tank or just for yes. your house? No, really? I did that specifically for my aquarium. So basically when I came, when we came into the house, um, uh, I will take reefing with O, how dare you say that? It says that, that Ecotech has the best support in the industry, hands, hands down and no other company comes close. Eject him off of this <laughs> right now, okay? Reefing with O. Neptune had good support when I had a warranty some no, Apex stuff no, 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 once. No, but so. he says no other company comes close. Ah. Okay? That's what I take umbrage with. Umbrage. Ah, conclusive. Umbrage, I tell you. Anyway, so yes, the, when we put the ha the tank in the front of the house, we had to... Uh, uh, we, we basically had to decide the, the wife came and said, we need a tank. That's where it's going to go. I said, this is how big the tank is going to have to be. She said, get it. And, um, then I decided that I didn't want all the gurgling and water and everything else mm -hmm. under the tank. And I have a huge crawl space under my house cause I'm on a little bit of a hill yep. and, uh, and the house is, it's kind of a sprawling house. So way back, back there in the hill, 85 feet away. Mm -hmm. um, the ceilings are like 11, 12 feet under the house. Nice. And, uh, but the, I had to basically carve out the hillside to, to make room for it. That's all right though. It's, it's nice to have all that space, like, and not worry about spills. You're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh. Just drip down the hill. Oh. So I am notorious for the unintentional water change. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is where all of a sudden I'm like, Hmm. Wow, what's going on with my aquarium? Some of the numbers look a little bit weird. Huh, wonder what's going on. I open the door to my fish cave, and the water is down past half in the in the sump. I look over, I'm like, oh, that's right. Two days ago, I put a filter sock on to kind of clean up some of the particulate stuff in the tank, and I forgot about it. And it's near the edge of the tank, and it's mm -hmm. just overflowing onto the floor. Nice. It's, you know, like every every minute probably, you know, I don't know, five ounces of water. Who knows what, right? It's going on mm -hmm. the floor. Right, just over and over and over. And I'm like, okay, looks like we're doing a 60 gallon water change. Pull the hose off the thing, open the valve on the salt water, and put 60 gallons in. Well, that works, so you can do it. I'm scrolling through your thread trying to find a picture from under your house. That's right in the beginning. You can see kind of like the first couple, three. Oh, there you go. It's a few pages in. Those you are some long the... freaking return lines or whatever those ones are. Oh, yeah. There's 80 feet of, uh, of two inch flex under there good chunk oh yeah it was fun though and it's still working great to today and uh you know i, I put I, I put heat on there through because i have circulating heat in the house mm -hmm. uh, you know it circulates through the house and uh, i did it with one of these ebay don't buy one of these ebay heat exchangers let me tell you that um because Didn't they work very well that was 300 bucks down the tube and oh, then um, uh, I was like, okay, well, all the plumbing's set up. Everything's ready to go. Brian from Tenji helped me do it. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to convert it to a PEX. And uh, yeah, so we converted it to, oh, yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if you scroll to the, where'd the pictures go? Oh, oh yeah. my dog. Oh, man. Why you guys show me my dog? I lost my dog in November. I got hit by a truck. Oh, oh yikes. Sorry to hear that. That's, oh. That's Skippy. 
Skippy's like in every picture, yeah. man. Shout Aww. out to Skippy, man. Yep. We're Skippy. Harsh. Anyway, um, so the uh, yeah, I had to carve out all the dirt. Had to use like jackhammers and everything because mm-hmm. it's so hard. It was crazy. Now, do you? So, is it exposed outside, or do you have it contained or walls around it? Um, it's not outside. It's in the crawl space. So okay. The so air it's... comes into the crawl space, but it's not directly, um, uh, you know, blowing on it or anything like that. And it's not okay. the outside air. It's a little warmer than outside air. Okay, that works. Then. But, but uh, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. This is good. Nice. I sadly have no crawl space, but it it's does so look quite nice. You can you can spill stuff. Carbon falls on the floor. Anything you're like yeah, I'll get that later. But yeah, I put down a. a I had uh, concrete pavers that I laid down on mm-hmm. a permeable base so you can just pour water and it eventually just goes right down into the ground. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's handy. I wish I had a giant sump room that was outside. That'd be handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine ever going back to doing aquarium stuff under the aquarium. I can't even... It just... I can't even... You know... The, one thing that is nice, because my peninsula is on the stairs, and it opens from both sides. I can stand halfway up the stairs and be like, so just standing there. I don't have to bend over. It's so nice. It's great. That's nice. Love it. Yeah, for sure. But it's a it's a whole different world, you know, when you when you have that space available for everything. Mm-hmm. It just yep. gives you so many options. It really does. Oh, that's awesome. It's like, yeah, I think I want to grow an extra two square feet of macroalgae. Sure, no problem. Just I pipe in another little sump. There you go, done. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy. No, oh, that's good. All right, guys. I think. Hey, I'm... thanks to thanks, Miter, to say shout out to all the reefers yeah. who had to bury their dogs. It's the worst. It, it, does it, suck. Is, it is so amazingly bad. It's the worst. Yes, for sure. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry it does to be suck. somber on that one, but you had to show me the picture, man. It gets me into that mood. Didn't I know. am human. There are this people is... out there that know me that say Terrence is not human. <laughs> Terrence is human. You're not a robot. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> This is so, advanced Neptune AI. Not I know yet you've got released. a heart out here and you got stuff to yep. go do, but it's been a fun talk. We got to do it more often. I hope your, uh, uh, your viewers, we had over a hundred people here. I don't know how that does. looks like 115 watching now. Is that a pretty decent, uh, that's about standard. About standard. Yeah. But, um, yep. But yeah, so thanks for coming on today, Terrence. Um, I got to take the kids to the hockey game. So I got to head out pretty quick, but well, let me know if you have another one when you got a couple other people and we can just like get into the, I don't agree with you. <laughs> We got to talk about this because well, it's too wrong. You know what, though? Okay, I actually enjoy those because there is a hundred different ways to do the same thing in this hobby, right? And Absolutely. and everyone's likely right, so they're like good little debates. So it's it's good to Who get all the different perspectives. People agreeing. It's the most boring thing ever to watch. You. Oh yeah, I love doing that. Oh yeah, I mean this is why I have fun with the, the podcast because Rich mm-hmm. and I. No, I what? Yeah, absolutely. So oh, it's fun. Anyway, really all right. Good. Thanks for having me on, Devin. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thank you, sir. If yep. you guys, as always, guys, thanks for coming on today. You enjoyed it. Hit the like button. You need to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in next week's live stream. Absolutely.